Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with kissandlock.com. Okay, so today we're going to talk about bridge rectifiers, uh, fire power supply design, and we're going to talk about the important parameters and where to buy them, and we're going to show the cost of them and uh, a data sheet just to kind of cover them. And it'll be quick, I hope, and let's jump into it. What I want to show here is the bridge rectifier, the four diodes, the orange waveform, the AC waveforms coming off the transformer winding, and off the transformer winding, the diodes steer the voltages so all the humps are on the top side. So the green waveform is you only you see one hump here, but the green you don't see it there because um, the capacitor is holding the voltage up. So um, you see the capacitor start to discharge, and then it comes up during the orange one, then it comes up during the blue one. So orange and blue are the currents coming through these diodes. So that's our pulse current, and these currents are pretty high. They're 10 amps right now, okay? And that's 2.5 amps on the output, 10 amp peaks. So we have an average current of 2.5 amps, but we have, sorry, we have an average current of uh, two and a half amps, but we have these uh, pulse currents of like close to 10 amps. And so you can see the current turns on when the voltage on the cap starts to discharge and the next waveform comes up. As the next waveform goes over that green line, it charges up the cap, has a huge pulse current, try to keeping the average current at 2.5 so um, since it only gets to turn on during these small segments when the diode voltages are higher than the capacitor voltage they're only allowing current to flow during these short durations causing large, large spikes and then when they turn off we want to block the voltage so that's the other thing but I just wanted to show the average current this pulse current okay. I'm trying to draw a waveform here this this uh, it's so my attempt to draw a sine wave. That's the input voltage. And this green waveform is rectifier voltage where we take this AC voltage and we make pulsating DC voltage. So we flip this one over with the steering diodes and steer those to the top part of the waveform so we get this. This is for our positive voltage rail. So let's see if I can show the ripple voltage here. So uh, the cap charges up and then it discharges linearly and then it charges up and then it discharges again charges up and discharges charges up and discharges charges up and discharges okay so let's see if I can draw this waveform so when they're charging the current turns on right here when the capacitor voltage drops is dropping and the next AC cycle comes up and surpasses the diode voltage drop right about here um, the current turns on charges up the cap and then turns off so this is during the charge time now my drawing is not too great but guess depending on the load maybe some are narrower than others but typically they're pretty you know within a few cycles they look pretty close to the same so so anyway that's the charging time continue on the x-axis there the time okay so now these things though you know when the current's charging it's going to come up pretty tall like we saw like these peaks, okay? These look not so great either, but anyway, sorry about that. But anyway, this is something like what it looks like, what we saw in the simulation. So this is the, the current charging these high peaks. So the average current maybe is down here with some ripple, just like the ripple voltage and maybe it's 2.5 amps and the peak current these guys can be 10 amps it could be 15 or 20 amps even depending on how big an output capacitor the bigger your output capacitor the flatter your ripple is right 
the flatter your rip was, the less time this waveform has to charge. So when they're narrower, those peaks are going to be much taller. But anyway, this is a typical example, I think. And so when we pick out a rectifier, we want to look for I average, make sure it can handle that. And then I peaks, these peak currents. And then um, now another thing I haven't shown is this, let's say power first turned on right here. What's going to charge, um, it's going to have a huge peak because it's going to try to try to charge the capacitors fully up. Here we're just trying to charge how much voltage we dropped. But that first pulse is going to try to charge from zero to here so it's going to have a huge peak. And it can be 50 amps, um, maybe 100 amps even. It can be very big that first pulse. So the peak current is going to be important. And then voltages, the reverse voltage Okay, when this turns off, we want to block the voltage. Now our line voltage is about 120 volts, plus minus 5%. Now the peak of that, let's say it's going to be 170 volts or so. So now if there's surges, we, th this is just tolerance, but there can also be voltage surges. So you can be over 200 volts. So you want to choose a 400 volt rectifier. Um, to be safe, even 800, we'll see that the price difference is very little. So, it, you know, it's not a big deal um, to to make sure you have enough voltage to be sure you never break down during a surge. Um, so voltage, reverse voltage, and then forward voltage. So this one, we, we want to get 400 volts or bigger. And this one, it'll probably, the dial drops will probably be a volt to let's say 1.5 volts even depending on how good the diodes are and um, this will be probably 2.5 amps RMS and we'll say we want something 100 amps we want to ha uh, handle so we want to handle a 100 amp peak okay so we want to handle an I average of 2.5 an I peak of 100 amps and a voltage um, reverse voltage of 400 volts and a forward voltage we want it to be as low as possible because the power drop in the diode you know the power drop in this diode is going to be equal to this voltage forward times our I average okay and then that's going to be times 2 because we'll have two diodes on at any one time. We'll have a positive going diode and a, and a negative going diode returning the current. So, um, and then they'll turn off, they'll get a rest while the other two work. So on the average, we'll have two diodes. So on the average, we'll be dropping, let's see, I average, uh, let's just say it's one volt, make my math easy. It's two and a half watts times this. So it'll be a minimum of five watts. So when you have this much dissipation on a diode, you want to have a large package. And that will mean that you probably have well enough current to handle these things. We want to make sure we can handle enough power to make this dissipation uh, not a problem. So, um, all right, have I missed anything? I think that's what we want to look for right there. Um, there is a thing called thermal impedance, and that's junction to case and we want this small. This tells us how good the diode is at transferring the heat from the junction of the diodes to the case. Once it's to the case, we can cool it by a heat sink. So we want this number small. This number could be something on the lines of say 1.5 um, degrees C per watt. So if we put five watts in it, we'll have seven and a half degrees rise and that's if it's cooled very nicely but what will happen is I mean that's if we have a heat sink that can get rid of that but this is just this it'll have seven and a half watts between the heat sink and the junction of the transistor so we want to keep that heat sink cool so we want a, a nice size heat sink but 
that's why this number is important. Um, okay, so I think that's what we want to choose. Let's go find a diode. What we're going to do is we're going to look at some data sheets and kind of look at these specs and see how they show up on a data sheet. Okay, and the other thing, we're going to go look at the prices and where we can buy them. Okay, let's go do it. Okay, this is where I found a partsexpress.com. Uh, it's parts-express.com. Okay, they have a $10 off sale for Columbus Day. That's nice. Use that code. And here are the three options they have. I searched for bridge rectifiers, and this is the options. They have this small guy. He's only good for two amps, so that's not going to work. 96 cents. Hard to heat sink that guy too. He mounts on his uh, circuit board with through hole wires. This one's through hole as well. A lot stiffer wires. And a little bigger part, 6 amps. Now they're both 400 volt. That's nice. That meets our requirement. Uh, by, by the way, they've only got three parts here and it's no coincidence that they've chosen 400 volts. Okay, So it goes to what I was saying before. Um, you know that for protection you want 400 volts um, and here's a 400 volt 25 amp part 25 amps is a lot more than what we need but again um, what we want also is heat sinking okay because five five watts in in a part like that's kind of a lot and this one we can heat sink it and has lugs so you can run heavy wires to your capacitors possibly or to the circuit board or or you have options, I guess, but three dollars and thirty-five cents, dollar ninety-eight, and ninety-six cents. So you can see there's not a lot of price difference. You know, dollar to three dollars, a little over three, um, for quite a bit. You know, bigger part. So uh, pretty easy choice to choose this one, I think. A little bit more difficult to put on a circuit board. So let's go look at other options at another source, another vendor. This is another very good vendor, Mauser.com. They have lots and lots of parts, not just for audio, but anything electronic, um, tons of parts. So I searched for rectifiers and I searched for some criteria shown here, 25 amps, kind of match what we saw before in that other big one. And here's that part we found at Parts Express. Here's $3.12, I think that's slightly less. Uh, I think this same part though. We're going to look at the data sheet of that in a moment, but I just want to, we'll just skim down, um, see the prices. Here's some, here's some uh, nice size packages. Um, we're going to look at the data sheet of one of those too. Uh, maybe you do want to put them on a circuit board through hole. Uh, see, here's some options here. So we're going to look at one of these. I like these because they have a mounting hole in the middle. So let's look at one of these and let's look at the... Now by the way, some of these other parts that we're seeing, Viché on Semiconductor or Fairchild. So very good vendors or very good manufacturers of parts. Um, Com chip technology. Okay, so let's go look at some data sheets. Oh, by the way, uh, from this website, if you, if you scroll over this way, It'll show you a lot of pertinent data, like 25 amps, 600 volt, here's 400 volt, 1 volt forward voltage drop, 350 volt peak uh, surge. So you see what I'm saying? 25 amps, 350 amps, that's more they're going to cover our current requirements. And 1 volt is very nice, 400 volts. So uh, roughly an inch long, a little less than an inch high. And about a quarter of an inch um, wide or thick. That was these two parts we we're looking at. And if we scroll over and look at these two, um, these two are what we saw at DigiKey. And um, 400 volt, 600 volt version, 2525. 25. So I want to come back right here, $3.12 for either one of them. So, um, if all the other things are the same, why not choose a 600 volt? If there's lightning or any kind of big surges, um, 600 volt should be good for that. Uh, anyway, this one looks very good. Now let's go look at data sheets. 
Okay, the data sheet here, I can just touch this. Another nice thing about Mauser, it's real easy to find data sheets. Um, schematic symbol, um, four diodes, two AC connections, plus connection, minus connection. That's a really small picture of that guy, but anyway. Um, over here, high efficiency, that means like one volt drop probably or something close to that. And they have this voltage range, 50 to 400 volt. So, okay. Now, another thing, see how it says mounted and bridge encapsulation? So, one thing to mention about this kind of construction, there's four diodes inside there, physically four diodes that they basically drop inside there, mount these terminals on them and then pot it okay bring that up for to make a, a point about how easy it is to get the heat out of it because this kind of construction not quite as easy for instance here's the re, here's thermal resistance typical thermal resistance junction uh, case the semiconductor to the metal case and they're 1.9, all of them. Sometimes you'll see it go up with the higher voltage ones, but in this case, they're 1.9 with the, I'm sorry, you'll see the, the, okay, sometimes you'll see the voltage go up with um, the forward voltage drop with the, with the higher voltage parts, but um, this is a 400 volt part, it's 1.1. This is a 50 volt part, and it's 1.1. So I didn't see that voltage go up, that's interesting. Uh, going back to the thermal resistance, it's 1.9 all the way across because it's the same kind of construction. Um, so you raise, you know, if you have one watt coming in, um, it raises 1.9 degrees from the case to the inside of the junction. So, okay, um, some of the curves I wanted to point out is for voltage drop, uh, right here, that 1.1 is right here, you come up, and there's the 25 amp rating. So if you're only having, say, 10 amps pulses, come up to 10 amps and it's just over one volt. If you drop that 10 amp those 10 amp pulses down, well like say the average 2.5 amp, it's right around 0.9 volts. So, alright, so here's the dimensions, roughly an inch square with the center mounting hole. Now they do have the options with the leads or with the spades, so there are those options. The dash W gives you the leads, dash T gives you the the spades and uh, you notice three of them are all the same direction the plus on the DC is the one that um, is in the opposite direction of the other three kind of helps you find the plus pin and helps you orient the uh, you know the device in your layout okay let's go look at the day sheet on the other part okay so uh, this kind of part here the can stand on a circuit board through hole pins has a mounting hole and it says it's 25 amps 600 volts that's and it's dollar 58 it's actually almost half the price let's go look at it so the one thing I want to point out this is different than the potted version of that big metal thing this one has this is basically I think what you call monolithic has the four sem, uh, silicon for the four diodes um, instead of in the in the example of the other case where that silicon sitting in a in a round plastic housing like a normal diode and then potted inside a metal housing this one has a silicon four, four silicons mounted down on a substrate and then that substrate is mounted right to the heat sink so this one should get the heat out much quicker easier have less thermal resistance between those diode junctions and the case. So let's just jump down and look at that one I'm talking about and see where I can find it. Usually here, it's here at the top. Um, oh, here it is. Um, typical thermal resistance, R theta junction to case, JC, it's 0.6. 
wow, 0.6. That's pretty great. That's like half the impedance. So um, it's it's much better getting the heat to the heat sink. So that's one advantage of this part. Now the Ford Volt Drop is only one volt, so that's also good because that means it's going to generate less heat. It's about 10% better, I think, right? The other one's 1.1, wasn't it? I, this one's one volt, so that's better. And they have options to go all the way up to 1,000 volts. I think the one we looked at was 600, so that, that looks good. Now this is an interesting graph. I didn't see this on the other one. This one shows without the heat sink. You can go up to pretty close to 4 amp rating as long as, you know, it stays cool enough. As long as it stays below 100 degrees C, you can run 4 amps through it. Uh, with the heat sink, you know, you can go up to 25 amps. So, without a heat sink, it, it's, it's basically suggesting that without a heat sink, you can get away with running 4 amps. 4 amps with that 0.6 volt drop, it's, you know, maybe you can, I don't know, it's, we'll, we'll test this, we'll get one of these and test it. Um, okay, here's a Ford Volts drop curve. Now, let's say at 10 amps, where we saw before, looking at the other one, it's down around 0.9. So, um, and if you go up to 25, 10, 20, about 25, yeah, it's about, it's, well, 25 amps, it actually looks over a volt. So, it looks like it's about 1.1 volt. This looks like a very similar curve to the one before, so this has me a little confused about this one volt, because it looks like one volt at 10 amps. So, let's see. Oh, okay. It actually stipulates 12.5 amps, so half the rated uh, half the rated current is where they're giving this. So see, when you're looking at specs, you have to be careful and and make sure they're specifying them with the same numbers. I'm gonna have to go back to the other data sheet just to verify uh, where how much current that one is. Well, I think we looked at the graph, and I think it did say uh, kind of agree with the rating. So I think the voltage readings look about the same has better thermal impedance, but other than that, it's, um, so, you know, either part I think will work great, just depends on how you want to mount it and how you want to heat sink it, okay? So I think that takes care of our diode. Um, we saw where to buy them, we looked at the data sheet, reverse voltage, forward voltage, um, peak current, average current, so, and the price. So it looks like they're fairly inexpensive, just buy a really good one. I mean, wow, it seems like a dollar or two difference you can buy as good as one you want. But I'm going to buy this one and one of the big square ones. So I'm going to buy one of each, test them both, and see how they work out. Thanks, guys. Hey, give it a thumbs up if you like this.